It's good to be back. Hi everyone, my name is Ollie. I'm a doctor living and working in England as part of the NHS. So this year, what's going on? I think lots of you know that I've finished my foundation training, but I'm not yet in specialty training. So what's going on? What weirdness is happening where you are outside the system? So firstly, welcome back. And secondly, we just need to quickly run through how things work to give a brief overview. Many of you will know, you go to medical school, you do your four to six years at medical school, and then everyone completes two years of what's called the foundation program, kind of like the internship that would happen in other countries. And you rotate through six different specialties over two years to give you this broad overview in general medicine, in surgery, and in a primary care specialty, which builds upon everything that you've done at medical school and sets you up to move into specialty training. After your first year, so F1, you get your full license to practice medicine, and then after the second year, you get your certificate of completion of foundation training, which makes you eligible to begin specialty training. This is, however, a natural break point in things. There is no compulsion whatsoever to enter specialty training once you've got to this point if you don't wish to. And indeed, some people never do. You've reached the SHO or senior house officer grade, meaning that you can be reliably left alone to do your thing and carry out jobs that are assigned to you. And some people never wish to go beyond this stage. It is a very common time for people to take a break from the natural progression of training. They could earn a bit of money as a locum doctor. They could work for a few months and then go traveling for a few months, work on some kind of project, or otherwise work only as much as they want to work to live whatever life you want to live after all those years at medical school and then foundation. And because of this breaking point, it's a time to seek different experiences. For example, the CTF or the clinical teaching fellow year is a really common thing to do at this point, where a year is spent attached to an educational role or indeed a specialty clinical fellow year, what's often called a junior clinical fellow or a JCF. And this is a dedicated specialty post working on the SHO rotor. And people will usually do these basically to build more experience in a given specialty area that they've perhaps not experienced yet to make themselves more competitive for specialty training or simply to try something new and get a flavor of a specialty they've not tried. And that, to get to the answer to things very quickly, is more or less what I'm doing. I've now started work essentially as a JCF, an SHO grade doctor, what's called a trust grade doctor, so I'm locally employed by my trust. And specifically, I'm employed at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery at Queen's Square in London, which if you know anything about clinical neurosurgery, it is the place to be. And I do want to make another video at another time talking about how you can apply for these kinds of jobs um, outside traditional training and what jobs are available. But essentially I applied for lots of these JCF or clinical fellow type jobs and was successful for neurosurgery in lots of different centers. So perhaps if anyone is interested in applying for these neurosurgery JCF type posts, please do reach out and we can talk more about the application process and the experience. My role specifically is what's called a clinical research fellow in neurosurgery. It's called that because there's an academic portion to the contract where 80% of my time is spent as a clinical doctor working on the wards in theatres doing neurosurgical things and 20% of my time or one day a week is academic. So that's a day a week set aside paid time for research work. And because I'm post foundation on the SHO rotor, I earn roughly what an ST1 neurosurgery trainee would earn. But the really important distinction there is that I am not a neurosurgery trainee. I do not have a national training number in neurosurgery, very few people do, and I will be applying for a trainee position in a couple of months time. That's not to say it's a non-training role, of course, it is an opportunity to enormously upskill. And the major goal is to become a confident and competent neurosurgery SHO. There's weekly clinical teaching for the clinical juniors. We get weekly academic teaching as part of my academic post, as well as the chance to go to theater, which as you might imagine in a big neurosurgical center comes up a lot. And there's the opportunity to see all different kinds of subspecialties within neurosurgery. I work as part of the spine team, so seeing the complex spine patients, but there are lots of different specialties the hospital serves, um, pituitary, neurovascular, oncology. And so there really is the opportunity to get to grips with lots of different areas. It's gonna be a year of really aggressive development for me, and I really want to make the most of it.
I just want to take a very quick break guys to talk to you about this bag that was sent to me for review by We Are Menos. Now they didn't ask for me to make any content, they just wanted to know if I liked it and I did. I use it as my main work bag now. It's got a sleek, clean design that keeps things nice and tucked away when I'm cycling through traffic, as well as this unusual 90 degree folding hinge, which reminds me more of a camera bag. There are pockets inside for everything you might need, including a water bottle and those oh so important valuable items. So yeah, just a cool product that I've been using recently, thanks for sending it guys, and I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. It's also been a move to working in London. Um, many of you will know that I've never worked in London. I'm not living in London, but commuting in. And it's a pretty long commute too, so I get the train in and I then cycle from Waterloo over to Queen's Square, which is a sort of 10, 12 minute cycle. I was really apprehensive about cycling London, but really quickly I've gotten used to it and I've really actually come to enjoy it thus far, the hustle and bustle of cycling and weaving through traffic. And I've got a little foldable electric bike, so it's really easy to take on and off the trains and has plenty of power to nip me around between the sites in London that I need to be at. I'm now at this point a few weeks into the job. It's really hard work, especially with the long commute, and that means some very early starts. Sometimes we have clerking shifts, which start at 7 a.m., which means I have to leave the house just after half past five. Uh, in a morning, I leave just after half six most mornings, but it's really well worth it. It is exactly what I need, mainly because of the people that I get to work with and the opportunities that are there at a big neurosurgical center. Very recently, I was put in charge of organizing a national spine surgery course for senior neurosurgical registrars, and that was a really complicated endeavor, but it came off really well. You know, you're dealing with thousands of pounds in sponsor money and these complicated simulation models and corralling consultants and delegates around, but it came off really well and we had a super cool day. We've got research projects constantly churning around as well. I'm working with two other clinical research fellows who you may meet at some point, um, who are wonderful to work with and really keep me on my feet. But it's really lovely to be working with such a dynamic and engaged uh, research group because it means that we can achieve so much because everyone's pitching in and collaborating on everyone's different projects. I recently finished my PG cert in medical education as well. This is another expensive piece of paper with some more letters after my name, yet another one. And that is essentially a medical teaching qualification, which I did alongside my FY2 year. Um, it's a postgraduate course that you can study at a university like any other. Again, that was really hard work to do alongside F2, but I'm really glad I did it. It will be ready for my specialty application and I can use it uh, if I ever go for a teaching role in the future, which I well, almost certainly will do. I want clinical education to be a part of my life. And then lastly, YouTube. I have no idea how I'm going to manage it. I'm working more hours in this job than I ever have before, working extremely hard on lots of different things. Still have my BMA responsibilities and there's lots going on, but YouTube have just launched a new load of health features and I was lucky enough to be invited along to the YouTube space in London. Uh, which is just off Euston this past week to hear about some of the health features that they're rolling out. It was a wonderful opportunity to meet so many of the amazing UK uh, medical and health content creators that I've only ever spoken to online, but so lovely to meet people in person. And I'm going to be attending more of these events and engaging more with that stuff as it comes out. So yes, there's a lot going on. I am going to struggle um, to make content. I'm determined to, to keep bringing stuff out. I just don't know how often and I don't really know what the focus is going to be on, but I'm going to record another video at the same time as this talking about those new health features and what that might mean for this channel. So if you've got any questions, guys, that's just a quick update on where we're at. Please let me know. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and go and check out my website, ollieburton.com to keep track of everything that's going on because I lose track all the time. It's awesome to see you guys again. Sorry for the delay and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.